conclusion. The purpose of this blog has been to critically discuss the uncanny. Yeah. In order to do this, I researched the background of the uncanny. From my research, I found that the concept of the uncanny was first developed by Ernest Jentz in 1906 and was later developed by Sigmund Freud in 1919. Mm -hmm. I also looked at Masharu Mori and his development of the term, the uncanny valley, in 1970, which brought a more contemporary perspective to the uncanny. In order to better understand the uncanny in art, I undertook research into several contemporary artists who use uncanny techniques. What is interesting to me is that artists use just the right amount of terror yeah. to get people interested and keep their attention. The uncanny can be thought of as the moment just before a person becomes overcome by fear and anxiety. It's like a creeping feeling. When I looked at Rachel Whiteread's house in particular, yeah. This perspective seemed particularly appropriate. I also looked at the uncanny in music, literature and film. I analysed several different pieces of work, looking at how discomfort is built and played on in different ways. Through my research, I have developed a deep understanding of unhomely and how it makes the familiar unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, the uncanny resonate, resonates with me personally. Yeah. When I had my accident, the world changed entirely yeah. for me. It did. Once familiar and safe spaces, such as my home, became, ha became haunted mirror images of themselves and are now full of hidden dangers, the familiar became unfamiliar. I've shown this through my artworks, such as the cup of tea and sewing box videos and my car park installation. Um, yes, oh, oh right, uh, it's what I said, what you said, 